Hi guys, so for today's discussion, so we have the topic Johnson's algorithm. Now this is actually the second video about this topic. So if you want to see the very first video I made about Johnson's algorithm, so you can check my channel. So ito kasing video na ito is uh, used or ginawa ko siya kasi I'll be discussing the shortcut method for determining the make span for uh, the job sequence. So, just to review, Johnson's algorithm is used for two machines and n jobs. So, this is an algorithm that gives us the optimal flow of sequence that is applicable for two machines and multiple jobs. So, this minimizes the total production time and idle time. And we have the following steps in the algorithm. So, first step is to list all the jobs and times for each work center. Second is to choose a job with the shortest activity time. So in this step, we are going to scan two columns for machines 1 and 2. And then, kung sino yung pinakamaliit na number, so yun yung ating pipiliin na, is, na is sequence doon sa job. Now, if that time is in the first work center, so we are to schedule the job first. And if it is in the second work center, we are to schedule the job last. Now for the third step, so once a job is scheduled, it is eliminated from the list. And fourth is to repeat steps 2 and 3 working toward the center of the sequence. Now let's proceed with our example. So we are given the following jobs A, B, C, D, and E. And we are also given the uh, process time in hours for each work center. So, ibig sabihin, si job A will take 5 hours to be completed in work center 1. And then, dahil sequentially ito, it, uh, the job A uh, should go through the second work center that will be completed in 2 hours. Now, given the following process time for each work center in hours, we want to determine the job sequence that minimizes the make span and the idle time. So, dun tayo sa ating solution. So, ang sabi, first step is to look for the smallest number. So, if we are to scan the first and the second column, the smallest number that we can see is number 2, which is for job A, and this is under the second work center. Now, ang sabi, if the, if the smallest number belongs in the first work center, we are to sequence the job first. And if the smallest number is at the second work center, so we are to sequence the job last. So since uh, si, si number 2 is nasa second work center, so job A will be sequenced last. Next is to repeat the steps. So ang sabi, look for another smallest number out of the remaining numbers. So we can see that number 3 is the smallest number, so that's job B. And this is in uh, the first work center. So, kaya si job B will be sequenced first. Then again, repeating the steps. The smallest number we can see here is the number 4. And ito ay nasa second work center. So, we are to sequence a job last, which is beside job A. So, naandun siya sa tabi ni A. And then, looking at our remaining numbers... So, dalawa yung nagtay, the smallest number, which is 7. Pero luckily, this is uh, under separate work center. So, 1 and 2. So, magkakaroon na tayo ng konting change if sakaling nagkatay sila and they belong at the same work center. If that happens, so ibig sabihin, you have two feasible uh, flow. So, which we, uh, which, which we will be testing kung which among the feasible flows or sequence will give us the smallest idle time. So, pero in our example here, so, pwede kayong mamili between E and D. So, paras lang naman sila na uh, masasequence accordingly. So, we can just choose arbitrarily si job E, which is in the first work center. And dahil siya ay nasa first work center, so, ito ay itatabi natin kay job B. So, nandun na siya sa E. And then, Yung last job is si job D na nandun sa remaining slot for our sequence. Na meron akong ginagawang technique 
para doon sa ating pag-compute ng make span. So, usually, uh, sinusulat ko na yung uh, yung ating sick, uh, yung ating duration doon sa ating pinaka-sequence. So, katulad dito, si job B at the first work center will take 3 hours. Sa second work center, 6 hours. Si job E naman, in the first work center, 7 hours. And then, on the second work center, we have 12 hours. So, markers ko lang naman ito. So, yan yung ginagawa ko. So, kasi later, mas nakakalito kasi if we are looking at the original uh, flow or so original na given information. Now, let's go to the computation of the make span. Now, again, this is the shortcut method for the computation of the make span. So, meron ding isa pang method which was discussed in the first video uh, na ginawa ko. I think that was a year ago already. So, yun yung ginagamitan ng time-phased graph. Pero kasi in the uh, other algorithms, especially if we have multiple machines, hindi na advisable yung time-phased graph kasi nakakalito na siya. So, itong method na ituturo ko in this video is the shortcut method, if you would say. So, para applicable na rin siya for, uh, for multiple machines or multiple jobs na din. Okay? So, we are to compute for the make span. So, we just rewrite the, uh, the flow or the sequence from Johnson's algorithm. And then, we write the, uh, the columns, machine 1 and machine 2. So, I'll just I use M1 and M2 to designate the work centers. So, ang sabi, si job B will take 3 hours to finish in the first machine. So, we write 3. Okay? And then, since um, si machine B or si, si job B will take 6 hours to finish in the second work center, pero take note that tumatakbo na yung 3 hours natin in our work operation. So, we just add 3 and 6. So, 3 plus 6. So, we have a total of 9 hours. So, ibig sabihin, paglabas ni job B kay machine 2, so, 9 hours na yung lumipas in our operation. Now, doon tayo sa first machine ulit for job E. So, we add 3 plus 7. So, it will take 10 hours to finish job E. So, after makalabas ni B from machine 1, so, ipapasok naman si si job E. So, yung total working time na or yung working operation ni machine 1 is already 10 hours. Now, looking at our value, so we are to compare. So, yung diagonal. So, between 10 and 9, we are going to choose the larger number, which is 10. So, si 10, i-add ko doon sa uh, processing time ni job E on the second work center, which is 12. So, bakit Ganon. So, kasi kung sino yung mas malaking number, yun yung pipiliin natin kasi yun yung parang uh, may waiting time kasi during the operation. So, 10 plus 12, so that will be 22 hours in the running. Next, so we add 10 and 10 for job D. So, it will take 20 hours to finish si job D. And again, we are to compare between 20 and 22. So, mas malaki si 22. So, so, 22 yung gagamitin natin for our addition. So, 22 plus 7 for job D under machine 2. So, that will be 29. Now, for job C naman tayo. So, we add 20 and 8. So, we have 28 hours running for machine 1 for job C. And again, comparing between the two, 28 and 29. So, 29 yung mas malaki. 29 plus 4, we have 33. And again, for the last job A, under machine 1, 28 plus 5, we have 33. So, since tayo naman yung dalawa, so kahit sino dyan, okay lang. So, 33 plus 2, yung ating uh, work duration for job A in the second machine, so we have a total of 35. So, yung 35 na nakuhang answer, this is actually the make span duration of our job sequence. So, make span is 35 hours. So, the next step is to compute for the idle time. So, ito yung hint. So, pag nag-compute tayo ng idle time, yung unang-unang number uh, na makikita natin, which is on job B, machine 1, so, automatic idle yan. So, ibig sabihin, 3 hours. Kasi, ano bang explanation doon? 
Kasi, kailangan pumasok ni job B kay machine 1. And during that time, nagwa-wait si machine 2 ng 3 hours. So, kasi hindi naman pwedeng, pum, uh, hindi naman pwedeng mag-operate agad si machine 2 hanggang hindi natatapos si, uh, si job B. Kaya yung 3 hours, that is the idle time for machine 2. And then, yung isang way para makmalaman if there are idle times within the operation, so we are to scan the diagonal values. So, which is katulad ito, si 10 and 9. So, between 10 and 9, so mas malaki yung operation or yung duration ni machine 1. So, ibig sabihin, katulad dito si job E, 10 hours bago siya matapos kay machine 1. E take note that si machine 2 is already available on the 9th hour. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan munang intayin ni machine 2 na matapos si job E kay machine 1 bago siya pwedeng i-process or bago niya pwedeng i-process si job E. So, kaya may idle time ulit si machine 2 na 1 hour. And then, scanning uh, other values so, 20 and 22. So, mas malaki si machine 2. So, ibig sabihin, um, machine 1, dare-direct yung operation niya. And actually, si machine 1, wala namang na-idle. Usually, ang idle time is yung second machine onwards. So, depende kung ilan yung machines na given in the problem. Okay? Kasi, iintay nila eh. Iintay nila yung matapos yung job dun sa kanilang precedence or yung nauunang machine sa kanila. So, between 28 and 29, so, mas malaki pa rin naman yung kay machine 2. And again, between 33 and 33, so, equal lang sila. So, wala na tayong ibang makikita idle time. So, idle time is 3 plus 1. So, we have a total of 4, I, 4 hours idle. Now, again, if you want to check the time phase graph, dun kasi mas makikita yung idle time. Kasi nag-graph tayo dun. So, kapag kasi mas lumagpas yung machine 1, so, idle siya automatically. So, this one is the shortcut method. Okay? So, this is the end of the first uh, series for job shop uh, scheduling. So, we have two more videos coming. So, that is for uh, three machines and if naging multiple yung machines natin. So, watch out for that uh, second and third episode of the series. So, again, thank you for watching. If you have more comments or questions about this topic, so just feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Bye!